please help welcome the Mutt team to the stage. And I'm told to sit on this X. Wow, okay. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you all for sharing the film with us. We're so excited to have you. I'm going to ask you a few questions, but we'll have plenty of time for audience questions as well. So prepare your thoughts. I'm going to start with a softball. Please introduce yourselves and the role you played on the film. Hi, I'm Vuk. I'm the director and writer. I'm Matt. I was the DP. And I'm Alexander. I'm one of the producers. I'll start with you know a question that I'm sure is sort of on a lot of people's minds about the visual language of the film. You know, talk to me a little bit about the collaboration. You know, I, I used the word softness in the intro, but you know, there's a real tenderness to what you were sort of able to create linguistically. How did you guys collaborate on that? What was the vision? How did you bring it to life and execution? Thank you for that question. <laughs> Matt doesn't get to be on stage very often, and then I always tell him everybody has DP like the cinematography questions. So I'm really excited that we're opening with that. So. Very excited that you're here. Do you want to start or? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, we just talked about this a little earlier at dinner, but um, I guess, you know, without going into like the technical details of it too much, we essentially, Vuk and I spent a month together. We were with each other for 12 to 18 hours a day, just biking around New York and talking about movies and figuring it out. And Vuk originally wanted to shoot the whole thing handheld and we kind of, figured out we want to simplify the approach a little bit. Um, we were, you know, tiny little movies, so we wanted to do an approach that was appropriate to the size and set us up to tell the story in a way that took us visually out of it a little bit. Yeah, kind of pick our battles. You know? Yeah, exactly. This is the frame instead of just going crazy. We could have, you know, lined up a lot more technical, challenging shots, but I don't think that would have served the story. So we, I think, it, the way we kind of the thing we landed on was maybe something that felt more like a, a, a series of photos or something a little more simple, hence the four three and the more photographic approach, just to be make it sort of visual style didn't take away from the story itself. Yeah, yeah. And while we're at it, can you speak a little bit to your to your color story? I feel like the, the colors in the film have really stuck with me as well. What was your approach in that way? Uh, or none. That's a great answer. Yeah, accident. I don't know. I think it looked nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We we wanted to make New York look a specific way. We chose locations that had, I guess, color that we liked. I don't know. We I, hate white walls. We we painted rooms so that there was less white. That's true. We did we did paint the rooms. We wanted a lot of blues. We wanted a lot of. We did we we thought about doing a lot of pinks at one point. We, I don't know, I think we ended up just letting the city be what it was, but we did paint a couple locations to be specific colors for certain reasons, but I don't know, I think we're, that was more by feel than anything else, to be honest. I just want to add, Matt's being really humble, I think. I love working with him. It, he, he, we could have made a flashy, crazy movie. Like, Matt's very much about, like, we spent a month talking about the emotions and making sure that we knew what we were trying to say emotionally, yeah. and then, like, he ran off and, you know, shot this beautiful movie with me. But you were, you're home, you're, like, such, you let the story speak for itself, and you let the shots be what they have to be, and they're, they're so simple sometimes, but they're just what we need, and I think that that's, like, your approach. It's amazing. And if I can just add one more thing on there, not to make him uncomfortable, but we feel really lucky to have had Matt as his first feature, and he had turned down other projects before, and it's because he believed so much in the story and wanted to be a part of something that he understood and wanted to help co-create with Vuk, and I think that beautiful partnership really shows itself on screen. And we're going to shut up soon, but I think a question that he also That's brought, <laughs> not to put Matt on display, I'm loving this, but well, a good question he had was, what's the trans gaze? You know, how do we talk about this? And I think you really wanted to listen to me, and, and, and there were shots like when they were kissing that we, I called cut, and you were like, wow, I feel perverted. I would have never gotten that close, and I was like, no, closer. And I think, yeah, you just really absorbed a lot of things. It was, yeah, just very nice. Beautifully said. I would have round of applause for this being your first piece. <laughs> Amazing.
I mean, I to now ask you the question, what is the trans cave? But maybe that's for another <laughs> Maybe that's for another time. Do you have an answer to it? I feel like this is a contributing film yeah. to, the, to that question. I have, I have a few answers, and maybe it's more of a ramble. Mm. Um, and maybe it's more about me and how voyeuristic and perverted I am. But <laughs> I think trans people feel eyes on them a lot of the time, and we know when we walk in a room who's watching, who's not, who clocked it, who didn't. Mm. So I think there's a lot of characters stealing glances when nobody's watching of other characters. And, you know, when Fenya reveals himself in the laundromat, I think that's very trans. Having, yeah, just the trans gaze is very hard to take off. I don't know, yeah. Totally. That's one of the shots that has stuck with me in all these many months since I first saw the film. Um, and, you know, I think what you're doing here is so fascinating because you're approaching so many different in betweennesses, uh, and one of them being time and how you approach that. And can you speak to sort of in the writing process and also visually how you balance sort of this nostalgia and this massive history that you're carrying with you? with what is a very present, a film that's very much in the present tense. I love that you use the word nostalgia. Mm. Some people tell me they think this movie is set in the 90s. Because <laughs> there's the no phone. Piece. <laughs> he loses his phone and we're like driving in the shitty car and yeah, everything about it, the nostalgia. Um, I'm just rambling. But I love 24 hour movies. I love like Victoria and Good Times and I just think there's something very humanizing about sitting down and spending a day with a character yeah. and there's like mundane stuff really important stuff and i think giving a trans character the right to be mundane and to be an anti-hero sometimes and to be sexy like i wanted all those moments and i want us to to be there with them mm. well, they're all gifts to all of us do you have any questions from the crown don't be shy unless you are shy in which case that's okay <laughs> you can keep going yeah, right here in the middle. Um, were there any uh, babies you had to kill or darlings left on the cutting room floor that you were like, ah, this is cool? Great question. Yes. You are a great projector, but I'm still going to repeat the question. <laughs> sure. um, the question is about whether you left any dead babies on the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot. I mean, it's, it's part of it. We had a very crazy deadline. I put together, with me and the editor, put together a rough cut in two weeks because we were like racing to get into Sundance, and we did. So it was all worth it, but it was crazy. So there was a lot of like very fast, intuitive thinking. There is one scene I really wish we could have kept in, but it didn't make sense. When um, uh, Fenya's roommate, who's also played by a trans woman, comes to check on him after, like right before he's gonna go and have that fight with the ex-boyfriend and checks on him, he's like, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And he actually checks on her, and it was a moment to show like a, a trans woman of color being vulnerable, where I feel like sometimes there's such a mama bear presence that she also had, so it was mm -hmm. nice to have that like trans on trans love on screen. I wish that could be there, but it's not. That's a fascinating, I'd like to see that scene someday. In the, maybe in the DVD, yeah. deleted scenes. <laughs> I, know, I remember when I learned that you shot in September during our Sundance q &A, it was a shock. It's an amazingly fast post timeline. Anyone else? Yeah, right here. Can you talk about the casting process, specifically with Yeah, great question, given everything that's happening. I also want to mention, um, you know, Leo and Cole are here in LA. They're not here with us, but they are here with us. And, you know, we stand in solidarity with the strike. And I'm bummed that we can't celebrate Leo and Cole and yeah. for them to hear your applause and have you talk to them, but obviously we're fighting for something very important. So anyways, the casting process, it took like two years to find Leo, I don't know if you also want to add this, but a lot of these characters were cast through Instagram by me. Um, finding a trans masculine half Latino character was really, really difficult and I reached out to my community, acting classes, different colleges, you know, and then have a list of about 120 names of really uh, brave trans actors that weren't even actors that were like, wow, I've never seen myself be on screen. I really want to be a part of this. And amongst them was like Leo. And that was amazing. I found him. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'd kind of add to that, it was a long process and we, uh, I really, uh, the other, sorry, the other thing I'd add, it was a long process finding Leo. And I remember like the day you called me and said, we found him and how excited you were. and. Um, and it was still a process after that too. Um, and just to, just to get a half step back and how casting is really important in filmmaking in the United States because it's so um, 
films are also often funded dependent on cast, which is one of the hurdles. It took us five years to make this movie. Six. Six for you. Five for me. Seven. <laughs> he wrote it six years ago. My entire life. Um, but part of that hurdle was finding someone who who would help us finance the movie, essentially. And there are a lot of trans masculine working actors in Hollywood. Um, and so this is an extra shout out to Leo also, who can't be here. This was their first feature. Um, and they won the, um, I'm sure it's in some, one of your programs, but uh, they won the um, uh, Special Jury Award for Acting at Sundance, the first trans um, actor to ever win that award. So we're super proud of them. And they went on, they went on to shoot another movie already, they just wrapped, um, which is also Presidente. very exciting. Sorry? With El Residente, I'm just so excited. Yeah. yeah. But um, just to pick you back off and maybe cut you off completely if you were going to say something else. <laughs> it was really special to shoot this movie with Leo and find Leo. I was kind of thinking it wasn't possible at one point. I wasn't finding my Fenya, and I was thinking, like, okay, I'm going to have to drop something very important. I'm not going to be able to show a mixed race. Do you remember? Yes, this is all true. But do you remember that there was a point where we got so scared we couldn't find this person that we were like, okay, gonna play, book is going to play this part. Oh, no. <laughs> That'll also be in the deleted scenes on the DVD, I hope. Who was a... in his own short that is very fantastic and is one of the first things I saw of his that made me want to be a part of this movie. And he wrote it, directed it, and is in it. And it's on YouTube if you want to find it. It's on Vimeo? Vimeo, okay, Vimeo. Um, so we knew he could do it, and we almost cast his dad to play the dad. Cause... Which was a yes. <laughs> but he's a filmmaker, and I was going to be not. <laughs> one of many things. It's a lot to take on, I think, for one person to do all those things in their first feature. So when we found Leo, we were super excited. Can I go one more second? Did, didn't you guys shoot uh, like some of the scenes ahead of time with you as the, the lead at some no, point? No, so no, no, that, no. that is out there somewhere. No, we did a test shoot with Leo because I found him, got really excited. He came to New York and we did a test shoot with John. Can I say? Yeah, with the friend that like, um, that's his name, who cures his wounds in the bathroom. He was playing John in this like test shoot. Mm. So very interesting. And I was like, oh, you're not lovers anymore. Now you're best friends. Sorry to change this. Which, either way, I have all the scenes on my phone of you playing <laughs> Leo. So we're we'll doing an ad hoc screening of all of these materials <laughs> in, the, in the room afterwards. Anybody else? We have time for a couple more. Yeah, right here in the hat. Questions about the, the father son relationship and how central that was to the creative process. Thank you, I love that scene. I am saturated from this movie, but that is the one scene that I come back and watch at the end just to like mm. reconnect with audiences and, and feel the room. And I can watch that scene over and over again. <laughs> it's it's one of my favorites. It the the movie idea started with the little sister, but then very quickly became included all these other characters, but how central is that the storyline is super, of the father is super, super central, and I think, in a way, the message of, well, I don't want to say there's a message in the movie, mm -hmm. I want to leave that to you, but I really wanted to create a, a father character that was empathetic, that parents watching the movie could feel welcomed into, where like a parent might not be saying the right things, but has the heart in the right place, and kind of give him a lot of depth and allow his fear to be understood as um, misrepresented love. I'm kind of saying that wrong, but to me that was really important. I think that you get that in that scene and, and the way he, he comes like ready to change in a way, and, and I felt that was, I wanted that. I wanted to show a happy, but complicated version of parenting. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, he's the ticking time bomb. He is what we're picking up. He is what this young man is trying to clean up his act in a way so that he doesn't come across as a fuck up to his father. So he is the driving force of the entire movie, which is also a lot of pressure. Like, wow, when you do meet him, are you going to like him? It, how do we build it too much? But I think Alejandro did an incredible job. Yeah, yeah another amazing performance. Yeah, totally makes it. Anybody else? Yeah, down in front. Um, so what was your 
specific inspiration for writing this, this script? The question is about your inspiration for writing this script. My life. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm trans. Maybe people don't know that. But I'm trans. I'm half Serbian, half Chilean. So I, I've always felt a little bit in between things, hence the name Mont. But that's a hard question. And the more I get at that question asked, the more I start to like philosophize a little too much. I'm like, why did I make this movie? Why are we all here? But <laughs> I needed to make it. I've been starving to watch this character and a film like this, which shows a trans man being anything he wants to be. And I wanted to see myself my beauty and the beauty of my trans brothers and sisters reflected on screen. I feel like in the United States, a little bit, watching yourself on screen gives you the right to exist, and I just wanted to um, throw my two cents in there. And I had to make it. I have an illness. I need to make movies. To share the fiction, any of these reactions. Anyone else? Right here. Great question. Uh, New York is sort of playing a character in the film in which uh, boroughs you shot in, and the characters were from. Yeah, uh, John I th is in everything was shot where it is. Uh, so John is from Queens. That ha that pink house essentially you can't really tell that it's pink. The walls are pink, and that's a real house. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in Queens, and then Fenya is existing within Bushwick, um, and Bed Stuy a little bit, and we have a little bit. We have one shot in Manhattan. Yeah, very, different. very Brooklyn heavy. And yeah, very and much a central character. Zoe's house is in Queens also. Yes, yeah, yeah. Climbing yeah. Bridge, right, right. But super central character, and at the same time, I wanted you. You can never forget you're watching a movie in New York, but I wanted to try to make you forget that you're watching a movie in New York. I just wanted for someone who is from New York to feel like, oh yeah, I've walked there. I do laundry there, I go to that bar. So. Literally, we shot in the laundromat where the group does laundry across from his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we staged the whole crew in Gook's apartment. We spent a lot of time with the eating all of our meals in Gook's apartment. It was a very, very homegrown affair, I would say. It, it was such a small movie that you and I spent half of that maybe that entire month of city biking around New York, finding these locations. So a lot of it ended up being next to my house, conveniently. <laughs> Can't <laughs> be not? too far, yeah. Great, probably time for one more. If anyone's got one to close this out, think long and hard, it's better be good. Is, you think? Okay, all you. Yes. Should I answer that and then? Or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Last two questions. I, I, I do. Spanish is my first language. I grew up there and came to the States when I was 18. So yes, I do very much. And that's why I, I briefly mentioned it, but I was really sad when I thought I wasn't going to be able to tell this story about a Chilean trans guy, because mm. I uh, that's, that's what I want to talk about, is that intersection. So I wasn't born there, <laughs> but I was, I was born in New York, I'm half Serbian, half Chilean, and I left when I was about a year and a half with my mother, and then I was raised there. Uh, how do I navigate that? Well, I'm white, so I, I didn't want to talk about myself, I didn't want to talk about my type of diaspora, because that's not relevant to me, and I think to a lot of people, and I wanted to give uh, room for someone like Fenya to exist, someone that I'm white, but speak better Spanish than English, and if I drink too much, my accent comes out. But Fenya, on the other hand, can never take off his the color of his skin, so I wanted to talk about that. He is someone that walks into a deli, and you know, someone might start speaking Spanish to him, but he can't speak it, or he speak it, speaks it kind of like not so good. So I don't know if that's answering how do I navigate this, just trying to focus stories and my time and my energy into that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
And thank you guys. It's a, you know, I remember when you, we introduced the film for the first time, you talking about how the, the film started to belong to everybody else. And it's yes. been a joy to be part of so much gift giving. So thank you all for being here, for receiving it. Thank One you. last round of applause for the whole month. Thank you. Thank you. And if I could just add one thing for everyone, um, we, just like from the producer point of view, we come out in theaters, uh, first in New York City on August 18th, then here in LA on August 25th. Um, so please look out for that. If you enjoyed the movie and want to recommend it, please do so. You can follow us on Instagram at MuttTheFilm, at MuttTheFilm, um, for more news and stuff. And we're going to be, courtesy of Strand releasing, we're going to be in about 20 cities across America. So Theatrical, baby. That's awesome. Congrats again, all of you. Thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of Elfest.